The Luddites have returned and they want to tax robots. This is Libertarian View, your source of decentralized and distributed information. Ludd's philosophy is a radical movement that began in Nottingham in England in the early 19th century among textile workers. The movement is said to be named after Ned Ludd, who had allegedly smashed two stocking frames in 1779 in an act of rage because he was against the entrepreneur's earnings. This story was published in a local newspaper in 1811 and ended up inspiring other workers to follow his lead. From that on, they had been called Luddites. These people used to work for rich businessmen. They produced expensive goods. Over the years, they lost their jobs because of the automation of the work. The goods became more abundant and consequently cheaper. Productivity is not necessarily the number of services or manufactured goods. It is the result of the calculation that includes the material, logistic, tributary costs and the profit, which is the amount of income that remains after accounting for all expenses and operating costs to provide the services and products. The angriest ordinary statist of the time found out that his work was more expensive than operating a machine and then less productive because of the relationship between cost and economic return. They gathered as a guild which concerned of an association of artisans and merchants whose protection and professional help was requested in a particular area, something similar to what is now known as a trade union. Historically, these groups are allies to the state mafia. The Luddites used political power to profit from market reserve or government monopoly. As a result of the state protection, society became impoverished and the Luddites became richer. But when the government mafia decided to stop providing them protection, they resorted to violence. This mentality persists until today. However, an American reporter, Eduardo Porter, who works as a columnist for a socialist pamphlet known as the New York Times argues that we should not break machines, we should not fight against robots, we must tax them. Surprisingly, this disturbing idea came from the one and only Bill Gates, the person who introduced Windows to the world and turned billionaire thanks to his professional success, the person who never received a helping hand from the state and paid his taxes, but in the end has turned socialist. Now he wants higher taxes on the wealthy, like some sort of Easter calm syndrome and says robots should pay taxes. Make no mistake, Sir Gates' wishes are crystal clear. By taxing robots as a billionaire, he will be able to pay for these extra costs. But that creative small business entrepreneur with a barely known startup with a couple of robots won't be able to afford the robot tax. They will go through harsh times, which are worse for small businesses. Gates knows it. With this extra attack on machines, even by software, his market portion is guaranteed. Simply put, when a socialist billionaire cries out to the government mafia to increase taxes, what he really wants is to protect his property. If we argue according to libertarian ethics, the discussion would not even take place, because no matter what, taxation is theft. We must use economic logic, Austrian apiarism, to refute such a proposition. Whenever it's economically productive to replace humans with machines, it should be done. Labor costs would be reduced. Also, it could prevent people from performing risky tasks that could potentially cause physical, hearing and psychological damage, for example. And with the never-ending mafia's determination to create retirement systems composed of pyramid schemes to deceive workers into believing that they will receive back their investments late in life, the government mafias would make use of some extra cash. This also works as an incentive to demand a robot tax despite the loss of productivity. Government mafias exist for this very purpose, to delay progress and defend their allies, while you pay more for a product that could be half the price if produced by a robot. The Luddites claim to be for the worker, although it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but human labor has a fundamental comparative advantage over robots, even though it is susceptible to cultural differences and psychological 
psychological issues, it is more versatile and capable of learning. The capacity of human beings to adapt causes us to easily adjust to the labor market. Take the public transport ticketing system, for example. It doesn't make any sense to break automatic ticket gates to have bus ticket collectors' jobs back in the market. It is more productive for the bus company to have an electronic ticketing system than to hire a person to do the same job. Plus, it is more intellectually productive for a person to perform high cognitive demand tasks than certain repetitive tasks. In the article mentioned, the writer voices some honest complaints that intend to be logical. One in particular is undeniably honest. The US state mafia needs the money. Once he wants to give more money to the government, one can see he's already ready for slaughter. Free quality public education is probably his motto for life. He seems confused and starts throwing random arguments in the air, maybe to make up for his lack of economic knowledge. He relies on a study by the McKinsey Global Institute, which claims that 51% of jobs in the US could be lost to automation. See how the US economy is unproductive. The reporter argues that 2 trillion and 700 billion green money papers, you know, the currency that is tied to American politicians' honesty, would be wasted in wages. But on the on the other hand, how many more billions would be wasted in taxes? None of this is bad. Certainly, there is a better and more productive economy with less regulation and state interference that will rearrange itself more quickly. Apart from that, with a budget cut in the US, there would be less money to spare with the military to go around blowing up other countries with which the head of the states is angry. There is a widespread belief that the government knows how to spend your money better than you. This is false. Governments don't do economic calculations like people. The people, as companies or individuals, depend on assertiveness. Governments pay for mistakes by exploiting people's efforts. As the Austrian economist Ludwig von Mises explained in his book Economic Calculation in the Socialist Commonwealth, it is impossible for a government to centralize resources and allocate them efficiently. In other words, only you know how to better spend the multicolored paper, even if it's tied to politicians' honesty or a strong currency such as cryptocurrencies. And this Eduardo Porra guy keeps whining. But if tax revenue decreases, the government will have no other way to provide its services and welfare state policies will be compromised. Hey, look, he's not being mean. He has been infected by the Comey virus, which damages parts of the brain affecting logical thinking and reasoning to the point of making the person relativize ethics to fit economic calculations. Welfare state is nothing more than the cost of the rhetoric that the government uses when trying to solve problems created by the government in the first place. With irrational and demagogic ideas like taxing automation and robots, the economy becomes less productive, which in turn increases the prices of goods and services. In the end, the poor become poorer by not being able to afford to buy what they need to survive. Every taxation on something has negative consequences. There is no tax only for others. The government's solution, instead of stopping being a pain in people's butts, is to make the lives of poor people more difficult, since it gets more difficult for them to get a job. That happens not only because of the lack of school or bad intellectual or technical training. Companies ended up operating with fewer people because they are highly taxed for each employee. If it wasn't for the government creating difficulties for the people, it wouldn't be necessary for the government to sell charity with other people's money just to appear to be good and well-intended and make entrepreneurs look bad. Further on, we have the opinion of an economist corroborating Mr. Potter's gibberish. They are just one of those economists who graduated under the state's doctrine. Thus, as Rothbard explained in his book, The Anatomy of the State, this economist defends the state because they live off of it. The government, via its education regulation agency, grants them a diploma and an intellectual status in society, and this intellectual advocates for more state regulation and taxes. After all, if the government stopped exploiting people's efforts, they would be left with no money. There is no point in trying to rationalize their arguments. The mere fact of working according to state doctrines already makes their arguments biased and invalid. Simply put, this is just more of the same. Just as the Luddites broke stocking frames in the early 19th century, today, some people defend taxing robots to break companies. 
Some nonsense economic ideas resist going into oblivion. Only reason can refute these obscurantist ideas that go against the laws of economic science. As Mises once said, ideas and only ideas can illuminate the darkness. Thanks for watching. This article was originally written by Libertario O13, translated by Droll, and revised and narrated by Baby Oda. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and share this video on your social network. If you want to be notified of other videos, hit subscribe and then the notification bell. See you soon!